I can't believe I need to open a video about that shit Sonic lore with a trigger warning, but well, here we are. Please be advised this video will discuss a sensitive topic. If you are uncomfortable with the topic of domestic abuse, please feel free to give this one a miss. And spoilers, they really don't handle this too well. Sonic in the early 90s was no stranger to PSAs. There were a bunch of infamously weird ones from the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog during the Sonic Says section at the end of each episode, or the more subtle environmentalism message woven into the plot of the Sad AM cartoon. But as per usual, the comics decided to take it one step further and ten steps crazier. Dulcie the Dragon was a character introduced in the second season of the Sad AM cartoon that, for lack of an easier explanation, was kind of just annoying. She was convenient in getting the characters from point A to point B as she could literally carry the entire team of freedom fighters on her back while she flew, but she was also very ditzy. This led to a running joke where she'd crash land or bonk into a wall, get the comedic Looney Tunes-esque stars around the head dazed effect, and then make a random comment about seeing her ma again. Since the Archie comics were set in the same world as that series, they decided to introduce her to the story there too. Unlike the cartoon though, she wasn't the last dragon in existence, but rather was banished from the dragon realm for helping the freedom fighters too much or something like that. Her big moment came near the end of the endgame arc, where she proved that Sonic was definitely not guilty of regicide against Sally. Her evidence being that dragons can sense lies, and they themselves cannot lie, and therefore Sonic's all Gucci. This was universally accepted by the people hunting down Sonic, even if it did come the flying fuck out of nowhere. Dulcie was absent from the comics for a good while, and when she returned it was revealed that she had found a boyfriend. Zap! You see, this asshole dragon hated overlanders, that's uh, that's Sonic speak for humans, and kept attacking Station Square. So when Sonic went to deal with him, he was surprised to see that Dulcie was there with Zan. The Freedom Fighters learn that Zan has been abusing their old friend, which confuses them all when she seems to stick up for him. Bunny Rabot, 10 out of 10 name, points out that Dulcie seems to have an injured arm, which Zan tries to dismiss as, ah, oh, totally not domestic abuse. After shit goes sideways, Zan decides, you know what, fuck subtlety, and just openly attacks Dulcie in front of everyone. Bunny tries to comfort Dulcie and make sense of why she's still in love with him. Fucking hell. And blaming herself. <laughs> Fucking hell. All the while Sonic decides, fuck that, and uses explosives to blow up Zan, while Dulcie cries over his death. This whole situation is made all the weirder by the fact that Dulcie is supposed to be able to sense lies, and the fact that dragons, all dragons apparently, not just Dulcie, are literally unable to tell lies. So what in the holy ever-loving fuck was meant to be the message they were trying to get at here? Sure, domestic abuse is bad, we got that one, that's ticked, we can understand that, but was it that Dulcie chose to ignore Zan's actions or words? Was Zan full of shit the whole time? Was he choosing his words carefully to be deceitful but not outright 100% lying? Or did the writers just completely forget about that old deus ex machina from many years back? Because in fairness, the only takeaway this issue seems to give kids about domestic abuse is that it's completely okay to murder abusers with C4 explosives, which is a pretty weird take. Oh, and you know, just for funsies, the comic decided to make light of the domestic abuse in an issue four years later. Hilarious, guys, real fucking good job. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ, Archie. <laughs> Sure use a chin pad. <laughs> <laughs>